Today on this old house, how does a modern heat pump work? I'll take one apart and show you. I'll show you the right way to install stone veneer. So Don, what do you get going here today? Tommy, this is a console that we're building for the powder room. Nice, I think it's gonna look great. What happened to all this plumbing here? I've never seen anything like this before. There's already rot going on in that trunk. So what have you found up here? Well, a bit of a surprise. It's really the classic plumber's lament. Nice. See this main roof form? We're just gonna pull that forward so it's even where this existing deck is. Definitely says mid-century modern. The money's in the detail. That is beautiful. Hi there, I'm Kevin O'Connor and welcome back to this old house. Our project is in Jamestown, Rhode Island, but today I'm just a few miles north in Providence for a meeting with our homeowners. Our homeowner, Don Powers, is also our architect and with the help of his wife, Dana, they are the first homeowners to not only live in the house, but also to design it as well. And a lot of those creative decisions are happening today right here in Don's office. Hey Don, hey Dana. Hey Kevin. Good to see you guys. Good to see you. Nice offices you have here. Busy Thanks. place. Yeah. A lot of folks Busy. back there. So we are uh, right about the wall bore stage. I mean, when that's done, we get to the finishes and the trim and all that. So a lot of decisions for you guys that's yes. right. that need to be made. Um, where do you start? I mean, how do you get started in finishing out, figuring out everything in the house? I think for us, we wanted to continue the simplicity of the architecture and bring that into the interiors. And the first thing that we kept coming back to was a lighter wood Scandinavian finish flooring. And okay. so that became the starting point with white walls. So when you say lighter wood, the oak obviously, but yes. no color to this? Well, we're going to have a light white stain um, put into the polyurethane that'll help make it a little brighter, mm -hmm. a little cooler, a little more cottagey. Nice, okay. Makes it sort of that beach house feel. And this goes all throughout the open floor plan? Yeah, so this, you know, it's, it's basically an open floor plan. I'm circling around the kitchen and down the two stairs into the living room. So all of that would be the same floor. This sort of ties that open floor plan together. Right. And that is going to tie in with the kitchen cabinets that we selected. Because again, from that space, you can see into the kitchen. And we wanted to bring that element into the living room by wrapping the fireplace in a shiplap. Oh, interesting. So this volume right here, that's sort of the fireplace mantle. And then that's mirrored on the other side of the room by this bump out, this what I call a feature wall, that's also going to have the oak shiplap. So those two, two. So just two little accent walls. Yes. So this obviously isn't shiplap, but it is the oak. Do you have the paint color chosen? Right here. So the rest of those walls will be in a warm white. Right, and this is the contrast you'll see when you right. have those accent walls. Yeah. Well, that's going to be pretty cool to see. So right. light and neutral with a lot of texture and the natural wood. And this is for upper and lower cabinets? Those are the lowers. The uppers are in this finish right here. So it got that combination going right there yeah, all right. throughout. Okay. Uh, I'm looking at a lot of fabrics here. Uh, what is all of this? We had to incorporate some existing pieces that we had. Mm. And so that was also important in, the, in guiding the other decisions for, for the room. So this is a big sofa and we've got some chairs in this fabric. And, and so we needed to find something that tied it all together. Mm. And that's what guided the decision about this area rug that we'll use in that space. Okay, and then on top of that, I see other fabric swatches. Those stand for other pieces of furniture that you're adding? They do. So we have another sofa in this kind of warm white that'll mm -hmm. look, I think, pretty nice against that um, white wall color. And the window treatments are gonna be in this texture, kind of natural woven shade, and a couple of accents of leather here. Beautiful. I do see a dark pop of color right here. Right. Is this in the plan or is well, this? Well, see, you can see that the open floor plan right here, but right. in this one room right here, which is the den mm -hmm. or the TV room, and because that's separate and sort of a retreat, it's a chance to do a really strong contrast and, and make a very dark space in this Triton blue. And, and as you say, it's not really part of that open floor plan, so it's that retreat from the open floor plan. Yes. That's going to be pretty cool as well. So there's one more material that I see here. These are white, but they're actually metal. What is this material? Those are the appliances. And what, oh, I, what cool. I love about that is it's a kind of nod to appliances from 30 or 50 years ago when, when they were white enameled. And we're using, returning to that sort of traditional 
finish, but it's going to not look like your grandmother's yeah. refrigerator. Yeah, that, and that is very cool. All right. Well, you guys seem to have your act together. I love it. You're ahead of the game, so we thank you for that. Uh, and if you have any problems with the designers, just let us know. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. Thank you. Thanks, Kevin. Thanks, Kevin. Wall-hung toilets have become much more popular in this country on new bathroom installations. For years, we've seen them in Europe, and they're trending locally for a couple of reasons. One is they leave a little bit more space in the bathroom, and they're also more hygienic, easier to clean and to keep clean underneath. But the installation is a little bit different. Josh Jordan's helping us with our plumbing today. What's the layout here, my friend? Uh, the layout is we have a vanity that's going to go right here, a uh, custom tile shower going there, freestanding tub going here okay, good. Uh, and normally we would be putting a regular conventional toilet in which would get roughed in normally you would rough in a toilet 12 inches off the off the wall through the floor right through down. the floor but this is a wall hung toilet so we have to have a way to carry the weight of the toilet so they make this pre-made carrier it's all made out of steel and what happens is this carrier is designed to be secured to the wall and now this carrier can carry the weight of the toilet and a person on it. And then all of the working parts, the, this is the water tank right here, built right into the wall. All the service parts and the flush mechanisms will be right here, always available for service. And this will be completely built into the wall, so you won't see anything except the toilet sitting off the side. All right, we ready to drill our hold through the plate? Okay, so let's secure that in. Let's just double check it for plumb. Perfect, go for it. Yeah, go for it. All right, so now the carrier is secured. We just need to run our water supply from right here inside the wall down here, and then this rough is complete. They'll just put the walls in, and you'll be back after that, right? Yeah. Thank you, Josh. Nicely done. No problem. This is our idea house in Narragansett, Rhode Island. It's where we like to test out our new products and ideas. Today, we're looking at some stone veneer for the living room. Our mason is Buck. Hi, Buck. How you doing? Good. So, what is this? It's a manufactured thin stone veneer. Actually, it looks pretty good. The molds that they make this manufactured stone with have just come a long way. I mean, that looks like real stone to me. And the other thing I like about this buck is it's very easy to lay, correct? Yes. So we have our backer board, which is a cementous material. It's already in place. Where are we going to start our work? Going to start in the corner. All right, great. So right now, Buck, you're using a modified mortar, I can see. Yes, it's a thin set, fiber reinforced mortar. All right, and just perfect for our application. Yep, has great right. adhesion. And you're coming out of the corner, why, Buck? Just a good place to start. Just a good place to start. We make our run left to right. Always use a notch trowel. When we place the stone in, the mortar kind of spreads out and we get that good grip that we always look for. Yes. All right, great. You're going to put some, what we call, butter on the back of the stone, right? Yep. Nice. Nice. So, Buck, that's why you can see why we butter the back of that stone. Just gets that extra grip. All right. So, Buck, you throw that one in nice and tight to the corner piece. Then we're going to work our way back to this corner, put that piece in, and then I think we have a cut in the middle. Is that correct? Yes. Yeah, OK. OK, so Buck, as you bring that in, what we have here is we have a stop built by the carpenters. This is just going to mimic our bookshelf, so that way we don't overlap it. Yep, great. That looks good. Too much? 
Nice. All right. So, Buck, all we do is we come back to this corner that we started, flip our corner piece over. We're going to put it in place. That's going to keep our running bond going, which is basically brick over brick over brick. All right, so this is looking great, Buck. So what do you think? Another two, three days to finish this up? Yeah, two days. OK, it's really looking great. Can't wait to see it when it's done. Me too. All right, Buck. We're hoping that energy from the sun is going to be the only power for our net zero house. And then we're going to take that electricity and turn it into heating and cooling using a heat pump. Now, we've talked about heat pumps a lot, but how do they actually work? Well, our HVAC professor is back at the barn, ready to show us. Richard, for years you have told us with a heat pump that you're installing a lot of these days yeah. that it has the ability to find heat even on the coldest of days. That's right. That's a hard thing to get your head around. In order to understand it, though, we've got to start with a basic understanding of air conditioning. Okay, so this is a little mock-up of how every air conditioning system around the planet works. Mm -hmm. All right, and it works on the most important principle to me in thermodynamics, which is heat always goes to cold. No matter what. And so imagine this is the inside unit, the inside, the part that's inside your building has a fan going across it. This is the coil right. you have, yep. Right, and it's filled with refrigerant. If I can get that really cold, the air, the heat that is in the air on a hot summer day passes by this coil and the pipes inside this are really cold, the heat has no choice but to be absorbed into the refrigerant. Make something cold, put right. it here, heat comes to right. it. And simply put, now that heat that's now trapped inside that refrigerant moves through the piping, through a compressor, to outside, and now this coil is hotter now, and now what happens? The same law happens. If this is really hot inside the refrigerant piping now, and even though the air outside is warm, but, or slightly warm, it's still going to be, this is heat, is going to go to the cooler air. So it's 90 degrees outside. That's right. So long as this is more than 90 degrees, let's call it 120. That's right. It now thinks the 90 is cold. It has no choice. So it's right. going to go to that. Heat goes to cold. So now that dumps out. Now this gets a little bit cooler coming back. And now we just have to make that refrigerant really cold, cold, cold again. OK, so cold here attracts the heat. Hot here dumps the heat. That's right. This is the part that doesn't make any sense. Right. How can you have something that is both colder than the warm inside air, yeah. but then hotter than the hot outside air? The same thing is both things. Well, if I can compress a refrigerant, it has no choice but to get hot, OK? Now, any gas will get hotter if you compress it. This is a perfect example here. This is a little sample unit. Now, this is just filled with air. And you can see there's a little piece of cotton right here. Whoa, whoa air. So not even refrigerant, just air. It's a gas. So okay. air works the same way. What will happen is we'll compress that air and get it so hot, we'll get to the flash point that it'll light it up. I don't believe this. Watch this. I don't believe this. See it? <laughs> you see it? Okay. You just lit that on fire All right. with compression. It was in for a nanosecond, but it, was, it helps you understand that if we compress a gas, and it's, it's and, and directly proportional to the change in pressure, too. It'll get hotter as I compress it more. So that's what this is doing. That's right. Okay, and this wow. has one speed. Now, so, so, so this gets... So that little bit of gas right. that picked up heat from inside, that's you make right. it super hot. Now I could get up to 150 out here. I can get really hot, right? Yeah. But now, I, I dump the heat to outside. Now, how do I get it cold again? Well... Just like when we compress a gas, it gets hot. If we release a gas and get it to a lower pressure, just the opposite. it'll get cold. So that every single air conditioning system has a valve like this called an expansion valve. So here is the high pressure refrigerant right here. Hot. Right. And now it goes to a little tiny needle valve. So the best way to understand that, so this is a can of compressed air, but it's actually in a liquid state inside the can. Because it's and, so compressed. Right. And this oh. needle right here is very similar to the expansion valve. So, you can see right here, I have a digital thermometer. 82 degrees. Okay, so now. Oh, look at it drop. Wow. We've already lost 20 degrees. Mm -hmm. And that's just air. That's just air. Okay. Holy so mackerel, in the 40s. You're in the 40s. And feel, feel the can. That is, un oh yeah. yeah, it's like a block of ice. So with this type of refrigerant, we could get as low as minus 37 degrees, <sighs> okay? And so that's what's going on right. where? So it's the same process. That expansion valve, when it releases, 
It lets it go into larger space and just drops that and makes that coil really, really cold. We pick up the heat inside the building, move the heat through the compressor, dump it to outside, the cycle repeats. It just continues billions and billions of times every hour of the day worldwide in every basic air conditioning system. That's sort of how I make a hot day comfortable. Right. How do I make a really cold day comfortable? We want to just reverse everything that we got here. Right here we've got a cold coil here mm. and hot outside. We want it just to be the opposite. We want it to be cold, and we want it to be really cold. So just like you said, even if it's hot outside, so long as this is hotter, the heat's going to move. Correct. Now you're saying that so long as, right. even if it's cold outside, so long as this is colder, right. the heat will move again. If that refrigerant got down to minus 37 and there was zero degree air around it, there's 37 heat, degrees of temperature. Heat would go to cold, to go into that cold refrigerant. Okay. Uh -huh. So you pick up heat, the compressor pumps it up, gets it hotter. That coil is now hotter. The cold air that's in the room crosses a, what goes across that coil that's hotter. The heat gets heat goes to the cold, house. goes into the building. Now what do you got to do? You got to go back through a different expansion valve because now we got to get that outside coil again cold. So again. valve is there, just pointed in the a opposite different, direction. It's a different valve, but it has to go in the opposite direction. Huh. All right. So. You could have two separate systems, a heating system moving this way and a cooling system going this way. The way that we can use the same equipment to do both functions is an ingenious device called a reversing valve. Now this sits right here and the compressor always puts out the hottest refrigerant. So if I look here, it normally would come right here and it goes right to, in the air conditioning mode, it goes right to the outside coil. Remember we want it to be hotter outside. Mm. Now if I switch the thermostat and I say, let's now go to heating of the building, oh. here's the hot refrigerant going right inside the building. It's just right? a simple little gate. Yeah, that's absolutely, just moving go. back and forth between air conditioning and heating. Okay? Ah, man, it doesn't look like magic, that's right. but it is. It's just brilliant. It's just absolutely brilliant. This technology is pretty basic, you know, and what the complaint was with heat pumps, you get down to 30, 35 degrees outside and you often have to have electric strip heat or backup heat. Right. And it really was the nature of this level of technology, the compressor was just on at 100 miles an hour and then off. And these fans were on and they were off. And that expansion valve just opened and closed. And so what happens is it would gather a little bit of heat and then it would rest and it would, wouldn't be able to keep up. It was every of, time it rested, it was the just heat as, would leave the house. Right. And so all the modern systems, the inverter style heat pumps, what happens is it has, let's take the compressor for example. This compressor now Instead of being on at full blast, this thing has 150 different speeds. Hmm. So it's constantly changing the pressure of the refrigerant, which means it's changing the temperature. So right. if I didn't want really, really hot and I wanted, say, 87 and a half degrees, could I get 87 and a half degrees? Absolutely. Precisely that. Absolutely. Wow. All right. So now that's on the heating side. We change the compressor speed and spin. Okay. The expansion valve. Remember the expansion valve? That just was a simple open closed device. This thing is a modern expansion valve and this thing will open and close at 400 different positions in what? 3 eighths of an inch of travel. What? So now you're matching the perfect amount of pressure for the heating side. On the cooling side, you're just changing it just right. So if I didn't want 30 degrees really cold, I right. wanted say 47 and a half degrees, Absolutely. I could get just that? Absolutely. Wow. And then also these fans. Now the fans are all ECM fans, which means they're going to spin in concert mm -hmm with the expansion valve and the compressor. So all the fans will also change their speed. ECM is what, electronically? Electronically con commutated motor. Right. So okay. here, if you look here, the regular fan is, was always on, right? Yeah. But this would be like adding a dimmer to it. So now as you need less, it would uh, just change it. Okay, so an ECM it. motor gives you that control, that Absolutely. variable speed. Right. Here's our reversing valve we talked about, remember? Yeah. Here's the expansion valve right here. Here's the compressor and then two lines right here that are going to either send heat into the building or send heat out of the building. And wherever that heat is, it's going to go to cold. You have demystified a very complicated subject. Thank you. If there's I hope a so. fifth or sixth law of thermodynamics, we'd name it after <laughs> you. Nobody could spell it. Nice job. <laughs> we love it when the homeowner gets involved with their renovation. On this project, Don is not only the architect, he wants to get involved with the build. So, Don, what do you get going here today? Tommy, this is a console that we're building for the powder room. Mm -hmm. um, I wanted to do something that was like the rest of the house, this mix of old and new. So we've got this console I had designed and welded up Steel over here. Steel frame, yeah. Steel frame. Okay. And then we're going to top it with this 100-year-old oak 
top. Red oak. Yeah, it looks, yeah. Like, uh, looks like you resaw that out of a couple of joists. I can see the tenons on the ends there. Yeah, I think it was a door jam in a, in a barn. And we, what we did is we, we sawed it down the middle, laid it out, surfaced both things to make them the same thickness, and then joined it together with dowels. Great. All right, and this is the sink you want to use. This is the sink. All right, so that sink is going to sit on this table. This is pretty narrow. Yeah, um, the sink will sit a little bit out from the edge. Okay, so it's going to be proud here. Right. All right. And the reason for that is the powder room is so narrow that we need room for that door to oh, swing. Oh, there's a door that yeah. swings right here. Right. Oh, that's a good idea. Yeah. So. All right, so I see you've got some of this laid out. So yeah. looks like this is the the width of the cabinet uh, countertop right here. That's right. I see you've got a couple of different layout lines here. You're just trying some different things. Yeah, I was just playing with how what was the right amount of overhang for this beam relative to the sink right mm -hmm. here. Okay. So have you decided which one you're going to do? It's the second one in. So we're going to cut this line across here. Mm -hmm. Then you're going to go straight over and then cut the length. Right, and then we're going to need to cut a four-inch hole for this bowl to sit down, and then a hole for the faucet that sits up and over the... All right, so now we're going to cut the straight line that goes here, where it meets this arch here. You're going to do this line right here, right? Mm -hmm. And then we're going to stop it here and run another straight line. Mm -hmm. What I want to do is I want to drill a hole right here to act a relief right here to soften that inside corner so it's not a real sharp corner. And to do that, we're gonna drill the hole with a plunge cutting router and use a spiral up cutting bit to pull the sawdust up. Okay, so we've made our two straight cuts in, and now we're gonna cut this radius cut right here. To do that, we're gonna use this adjustable compass. Mm -hmm. So all we're gonna do now is we're gonna take the saw, lock it in, turn the saw on, and just slowly cut your way around. And that should make the radius that you need. Let's try it on the frame. Grab the sink. We'll put that on there and I'll get the faucet, see how that looks. The pipe's down the hole. Okay, good. I'll have to hold this because I don't want it to fall over. Nice, I think it's gonna look great. I think so too. Thanks, Tommy. All right, let's take this apart. Next time on This Old House. This is the Irish School of Technology and Trades, a school designed to teach the skills of boat building to the next generation. So, turns out boats are a great metaphor for building almost anything. What's better, drywall or plaster? We'll show you the difference. And here comes the sun, or better yet, our solar plant. When the sun comes down and beams on this, it's gonna excite the electrons, produce about 300 watts of DC power. So 300 watts, what can that do for us in a typical house like this?